नदीम साहब इज ऑन बोर्ड ही इज चले अस्सलाम वालेकुम वालेकुम अस्सलाम कैसे ओवर टू अनम हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम यू ऑल टू एस्टेट वेबिनार सीरीज over 16 years istek pakistan has been serving the industry by providing platform to meet and connect with food manufacturers around the world during this challenging time where face to face interaction has become difficult we have initiated this webinar series in which experts from the globe are here to share and discuss their experience and new trends on the impact of covid-19 on global food industry and how the industry is adjusting with the new normal i would like to thank the distinguished panelists present in this session for their participation to share their expert opinions of sustainability and growth in these times i would now request our moderator mr nadeem mazhar senior editor publisher at pakistan food journal to begin the session over to you sir thank you thank you very much welcome all panelists avir sahab thank it is a great initiative on on part of pegasus consultancy and uh, to highlight impact of covid 19 on the global food industry and in this discussion i am nadeem mazhar publisher and editor of pakistan uh, food journal among uh the distinguished panelists among us are mr arij ikbal who is the ceo of alpha penta uh, deeply involved in the food technology and solutions uh as a provider to the food industry of pakistan he is also the president of italian development committee mr arij will talk about the challenges uh the in these times faced by the food sector particularly in pakistan and the way forward then we have mr amir sutade mr the managing director of multivac uh, middle east uh, representing one of the most important packaging uh, uh, solution providers in the world multivac he will talk about the importance of packaging and and uh, in the post covid new normal for the food industry Uh, Mr. Amir's presentation will be followed by with by Mr. Mamdu Saudi, who is the business development manager of International Flavors and Fragrances, UAE. Mr. Mamdu will discuss navigation of the new normal innovation in the post-COVID era. Uh, his sector also touches many sectors in the food sector, and it is going to be a very interesting uh, presentation. uh followed by mr vido wonke the area sales manager asia pacific of flux gerate gmbh the leading solutions provider for pump technology for more than 60 years uh it is the technology for filling and transferring fluids which is vital for the food processing industry mr vido will discuss how modern drum emptying systems ensure compliance to new post covid regulations in productions followed by the new uh, by following the new sop such as distancing of workers protection of media etc uh, these presentations will be followed by a panel discussion and question answer session to discuss in depth the important topics discussed by our panelists now uh, i would like to request mr uh, Arij Iqbal to enlighten us a little bit about the situation in Pakistan and his perspective as a provider of international brands uh, for the food technology uh, for the food sector of Pakistan how do you see the impact of the post covid uh, of the covid and the solutions uh, that uh, in the new norm post covid era assalamu Mr. alaikum thank you mr nadeem assalam alaikum everyone good afternoon and good morning since we are getting a global coverage uh, of this event uh, before i start i would like to once again acknowledge the effort of uh, pegasus uh, who's uh, put this uh, webinar in place uh, and i think it's a great effort in the right direction in current times uh, without further ado i would start off with uh, the pakistan market uh, the the topic for my uh, discussion today uh, and i'm not making a presentation uh, would be to cover 
uh, and talk about the challenges that we face in today's times uh, related to the Pakistan industry in specific, uh, which also to a certain extent relate globally. And going forward, what can be done to improve uh, and uh, to develop systems which will be uh, helpful the post-COVID era, as well as help in transforming uh, our food and beverage processing industry. Uh, as a start, I would just like to share uh, a few highlights of the Pakistan uh, overall food and beverage industry. Uh, we hear a lot about Pakistan being uh, a big dairy country. Uh, we are amongst the top five uh, dairy producers uh, Uh, I think Mr. Arij, uh, can, can anybody hear Mr. Arij or is it just frozen on my screen? Cannot hear. It is frozen. Uh, okay. Uh, should we uh, continue with Mr. Amir's presentation until Mr. Arij is uh, able to sort it out? Yeah. Our, Mr. Amir, uh, may I request you to uh, continue with your presentation? Uh, next, Mr. Amir, as, uh, as, as I had mentioned earlier, is the business development marketing, uh, is the, uh, I'm sorry, he's the managing director of Multivac Middle East, uh, which is a, a very important uh, solution provider, the company for the, for the packaging and the food uh, industry. And Mr. Mr. Amir, uh, may I request you to give your presentation, please? I'd like to say hello to everyone. Uh, thanks to joining this webinar. Thanks to Pegasus uh, arranging such a webinar regarding impact of COVID in the food industry, which is an important industry uh, that requires certain attention. So I have a short presentation I'd like to show, share with us uh, that everybody can see. I share my presentation on the screen. So it's all about uh, this presentation, which is important for all the audience, is uh, importance of packaging in post-COVID or new normal. This is what it's called on, uh, for food industry. And uh, we talk about the shifts which is happening. This is the impact of the uh, uh, pandemic on consumer behavior. There is a certain shift all of us we faced during these couple of months. Uh, which is about everybody is having immunity concerns, so is the growth in the healthy food, so they're more conscious about to have the healthy food, so clear increase in demand of the grocery uh, due to the limitation of movements in, restricted by the government in every country, for sure more increase towards online grocery, and for sure certain growth in the supermarket. So this is what happening. Uh, Certain economies face some uh, job losses, so for sure it's more essential to focus on the essential food, essential need and demand. And the uh, uh, concept of a stay at home for sure help the uh, boom in the online grocery. And for sure also more cooking home, at home. So it reduced the takeaway, take out the food delivery or QSR, quick service restaurants down and the restaurant business down. So in certain part, the food industry and the retail increased and the horeca uh, reduced because of the situation. And back to this uh, topic, for sure, everybody have a concern of sustainability in the past about uh, plastic uh, usage, but also when it comes era or situation we are sure at the moment still on it is a health concern. So for sure we have to now uh, consumers, uh, food producers, uh, government parties, entities, they are more uh, look after concern of about the safety and uh, they want to make sure that the foods are not contaminated and they are uh, really uh, stopping unpacked products and they want to have everything packed and secure. Uh, it's all about everybody is aware of how germs can spread on the surfaces and concern on the food hygiene because of the COVID. Uh, uh, so these are all the things. Everybody is concerned about who, who touched my product before I take it to the bite, who touched my uh, product which I want to take from the shelf. So this is a concern of the consumer and that's why 
these are the points which are become more important. It's all about the food safety, uh, traceability, extended optimal shelf life. Everybody needs that. Uh, consumer requires secure seal packages. They need a stackable packages uh, for optimal storage and transport. Especially this is needed when you do the online grocery portal shopping. You have to have a, something properly packed that, that can deliver from the warehouse of the supplier to the household uh, place, which is a consumer. And for sure, still the important part, which is nowadays food become very critical, is about reducing the food waste stage and uh, keep the resources efficient as much as import uh, as much as possible because this is important for the industry and governments. And for sure, uh, reduction of the carbon footprint with more efficient packaging. So this is a concern of the industry and consumers which are driving and pushing the industry towards this. And for sure, the new normal which is happening. Uh, there is a shift on the supply chain distribution, employee safety availability. Uh, for sure, there is uh, on the uh, financial part, logistic, and for sure, again, as I highlighted, on the restaurant and quick services. One of the things that now impact of the uh, pandemic on government policies, they, they are make, make sure that they're ensuring the food supply to the country. Uh, supporting the industry for safeguarding the economy and job impact, regulation compliance for industry to increase the safety against the virus contamination and protecting people against hunger. This is very uh, critical points. Every government, every country, including Pakistan, all taking into consideration. And there is certain uh, framework, there is certain group of countries which is based on uh, how how they are developed uh, how, uh, in the food production, how they are dependent uh, to the import of the food, how far they are exporting or importing products. So this chart showing that. And if you look at the next slide, it shows about the food export countries, out, uh, what percentage of the GDP and uh, food production per capita. For sure, uh, Pakistan, if you see, it's about 0.8% food export out of, as of GDP percentage. So it's still the export is less, but uh, they have a good, per, Pakistan have a good production actually is in top uh, uh, as a food production per capita as a percentage. So I would say in such a, if there is a blockage of the uh, closing borders, uh, Pakistan is not in the risk, but also for sure there might be that opportunity that Pakistan food producers, they can export more out of the country or depend on every country, again, different regulation comes. There is certain signals of the post-COVID or call it new normal happening uh, this day, uh, which is for industry, as we discussed, healthy food boost, alternative proteins, online grocery, cook at home, customer trust, very important these days. Manufacturing automation, every country faced a certain limitation of movement of employees. And then as a food factory, you cannot stop the operation, even the government restricting the movement of the workers or employees. So as much as the factories are ready more for automation, they, they can be able to serve the market and to serve the country the best they can. Uh, advanced supply chain, risk management, work from home, it comes to the picture, cloud kitchens, which is more, more and more popular these days, and logistic technology. And for sure, for government, it's all about advanced food security measure, enhanced regulations, and it's all about the uh, public-private partnership, uh, so that they can really have a common strategy inside the country uh, social uh, safety net and for sure again international coordination that the countries they can come with a certain plan certain agreement in such a situation how to support each other so these are uh, some more highlights on the signals uh, as i reviewed in my uh, previous slide is about consumption of the healthy food more and more people pay attention to that fresh more immunity driven packed products and could be much higher uh, in demand in this situation. Uh, for sure, more and more, some people, in the, it was in the past that they go to the alternative protein consumption, plant-based products. It was beyond the meat. And these days, even it become more 
more into practice. These products still can deliver the protein which is needed and they are uh, really less in the carbon footprint and they have a longer shelf life. Uh, online grocery shopping, uh, it's uh, really something very, very important these days. And uh, for such an gr online grocery, you have to have a proper package, be able to deliver such a needs of the online portal. So this is also become important. And cooking at home is increased more and more. So you have to give some packages that give the possibility to the consumer that they can cook efficiently, safely at their home also. And, also convenience for that. Uh, for sure, it become new measures to build the customer trust. Uh, this is something very important about new new uh, inspection units to make sure that food that going out of the factory is not contaminated until delivered to the household. So this is also very important. I highlighted about automation, which is very much needed these days for the industry. Uh, because an industry felt it already. The, the customer, the, the food manufacturers, they were producing automatically. The, they were the ones they could really supply the supermarket with the products on the shelf. And important about the advanced supply chain risk management and for sure uh, work from home, which is a certain strategy for digitalization. Uh, which is a future for the industry. So everybody needs to look into it, that they can make sure that employees, they can work as much as possible remote and it's still the operation running in the site. And cloud kitchens make, uh, it's become a major part of the re uh, restaurant business. So lots of restaurants, which they had before a sitting area, they become like a cloud kitchen that they can produce and distribute secure food, somehow prepared, to the different type of uh, 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 buying points. So if I, you can order the food at, at, at home and this cloud kitchen, which was before a restaurant, they can, they can consume the same. And for sure, technology solution to make the uh, efficient way of uh, pr producing pack and delivering through, through the supply chain. And something for governments need to be considered for sure. We as an industrial, we have an impact on the 10, 10 topics and I'm sure every government uh, looking to this to make sure that they have a stronger local and regional food security. Everybody nowadays talking about localization is local production, very important these days. And for sure, uh, some countries like Pakistan, they have a great resources, but some countries also, also trying to develop the resources like in Middle East to make sure that they can do the good local production. This is all about food security. And for sure, it's all about enhancing the regulation. There will be more regulation in place to make sure that the food safety is the top priority for manufacturers. So there will be a next phase of uh, more restricted regulation that uh, industry learned in a couple of months, in the previous months, uh, that there is some room to improve in that respect. And about the partnership between private sector and government parties to make sure that all can be delivered in the strategic way. And again, for sure, it's all about a strong safety net for the residents, universal program to have a basic income, uh, basic food uh, for, uh, for, the, uh, for the communities. And again, a stronger uh, international coordination, which will come and there will be a certain tie up between the countries, neighbor countries, uh, where they can support each other in such a pandemic or epidemic situations. If you want to put it in the action plan, I would say such a post COVID, uh, which started the beginning of the year this year, it could have a mid term impact of uh, up to three years. But also we have to remember what effect happening to the industry by this situation, it will stay somehow. Maybe not in full capacity, but some of it. So this consumer behavior, this consumer behavior change will, will, will be there. It will be there for longer run. So this is what uh, we can put things in the industry. So for sure in a couple of months, it was a shock. Everybody tried to adjust, but now everybody returned back to the business. Uh, with certain planning in place to enhance the operation. So it's all about the return. 
is already we are in this phase going to reform uh, about the operational model and developing investment strategy for new normal so there will be a new normal strategy taking place as a reform and uh, uh, a stronger social responsibility for all which is very much important and every community every country try to educate the same so this is also in place addressing the food waste stage to reduce as much as possible uh, this is very important because efficiently come to the picture and goes to the reinvent, which is the input uh, inputs of the manufacturer, distribution and customer. So in these three phases, which I would say in the midterm of three years, things are moving forward and industry try to adjust accordingly. So important message I would say is uh, we have to be prepared for the new normal. It's all about this new normal, which everybody has to manage it. And as I said, this new normal effect will stay uh, longer. It's not like that, that it will disappear in case uh, whenever this pandemic gets under control. For sure, the effect will, will be there. Everybody learned that how important is food security, food safety for everyone, for every community, for every society, and uh, they have to take care about the same. And I'd like to thank you all. Uh, wish all stay safe and healthy. Uh, this is what we have to look uh, look after. And I'm sure there will be a question and answer session which Mr. Nadim can go through. And I'm, uh, I will welcome any question to myself. Thank you very much. Thanks for your attention and time. Thank you, Mr. Amir. It has been a very, very in informative and very pertinent, very relevant information that our participants have received today from you. And we will look forward to more during the question answer session. Uh, Mr. Thank Arit, uh, can you turn on your uh, mic, please? Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, let us continue from where okay. the technology, you know, <laughs> yeah. broke down for a short while. That's, uh, yeah. I would like to apologize uh, for that, but that's a challenge that uh, Pakistan faces pre and post COVID. Uh, we have our, uh, you know, technology related uh, downside, which we encounter from time, time to time. Uh, so uh, anyways, I was talking mm -hmm. about the overall uh, overview of the industry. And I've just started off with one of the key sectors where we have a strong position, which is the dairy sector, where we are among the top five milk producing countries. We produce close to about 60 billion liters of milk. Uh, and the consumptions are such that, uh, and these are points that I want to highlight uh, because this is going to be where the change is supposed to come. Uh, less than 10% of our dairy is packaged. So significant volume of the dairy industry is still in, in the unpackaged uh, sector or segment. Uh, similarly, when we talk about uh, the production of uh, poultry or red meat, uh, majority of the production is uh, once again uh, in the unpackaged sector. Uh, so, and when we move to the fresh fruits and vegetable industry, once again, we see exactly the similar, similar trend. We are still using a lot of fresh produce coming straight from the farms. Uh, the general tendency in the market has been in the past to focus more on uh, the fresh produce, which has uh, amounted to two major issues uh, for the overall food and beverage industry. Uh, the hygiene uh, is one of the issues and the standardization is the second issue. Uh, these are the factors uh, which have uh, hampered the growth in the industry uh, so far. Uh, this opportunity that has come around with the COVID uh, for the industry, and I see uh, every challenge as an opportunity. That's my view. And uh, from, uh, from the global as well as the local production point of view, uh, I think Pakistan has a greater opportunity as we, uh, to a certain extent, have our food basket secured uh, due to our own local produce. So uh, we have the capability to further enhance using the modern technologies, the innovation, the packaging solutions, uh, processing technologies, whereby Pakistan can leap forward, taking advantage of this situation. Uh, now, 
having said that about the overall uh, market and highlighting some of the key uh, segments of the food and beverage industry, I'd like to talk about uh, what needs to be done. Uh, the first and foremost thing, uh, keeping in view uh, the COVID situation, is uh, that Pakistan needs to very quickly uh, come forward and develop a standardization policy towards its uh, food process uh, SOPs, uh, food and beverage. When I say food or beverage, please consider that I'm talking about the whole food industry and beverage industry all put together. So the food safety SOPs have to be put in place from the manufacturing point of view. Uh, we are seeing a moving trend where uh, SOPs are in place when it comes down to employee and employee safety, and which has been uh, also and has always been very critical uh, with regards to uh, the, the hygiene standards in the industry. And we have seen uh, the multinationals and also some very leading uh, local producers implementing those standards. However, where we see uh, a bit of, uh, you can say, uh, a move away from the global trend is that we do not have standardized policies with regards to food safety uh, all across uh, Pakistan. These things, uh, since it's uh, people, and I have an audience from Pakistan, as well as from abroad, and I think it would be a good understanding for all, that uh, food and beverage industry has been defined as a provincial subject in Pakistan. So we have provincial food authorities, which have their own legislature in terms of implementation of how that in standardization has to take place. Now, since we are talking about the challenges and also the way forward, I think this is going to be an opportunity where the government can take an initiative and build a uniform policy on standardization of food practices or manufacturing practices in the food and beverage industry, which are applicable nationally, uh, which can be uh, modified and adapted to the COVID and post COVID scenario, and also can be directly related to the global standards uh, more quickly than it has been done in the past. Because right now, as we say, and uh, what Amir was uh, referring to earlier on in his presentation, we, we are on a timeline. And these matters probably uh, earlier could take maybe five years to be implemented to bring industry standards to, uh, to a level where we are at par with the rest of the world. But the deficiencies we see in our system need to be very quickly uh, changed and adapted to on a global level. And keeping in view, once again, the COVID situation, I think the standards uh, need to be aligned uh, according to that. So this is one of the things and areas where Pakistan needs the help and support and the input uh, very strictly. Uh, when we talk about standardization, we feel that um, hygiene and automation. These are the two key factors which the industry needs emphasis on. Uh, and uh, when it comes down to the manufacturing side, uh, and also uh, when we talk about packaging solutions, uh, as the hygiene standards uh, need to be implemented as part of the food, secure, uh, food safety standards. And on the other hand, uh, what we need to see is the automation part, be it in the manufacturing side, uh, any aspect of manufacturing, as now uh, the human factor uh, and the human involvement uh, adds another degree of, uh, you can say, uh, criticality to uh, the manufacturing process. Uh, automation can bring in uh, that uh, opportunity where you can reduce human interaction and the possibility to uh, you know, avoid any food-related or beverage-related uh, public health concerns. Globally, uh, and this is a very uh, alarming situation, and I say globally, uh, it is considered that food-borne disease are almost 60 to 70%, and this is a global statistic. Now, to counter that in an environment as of as we are faced with today, 
the best and most ideal uh, solution would be obviously everybody all around the world is well aware of the hygiene practices but i think automation which is going to be uh, an uh, can play an imperative role in reducing uh, the possibility of these things uh, so we need to uh, focus and make use of the time that we have now to relook at our manufacturing processes and improve on the automation aspect so that we can ensure reducing that uh, the next thing that i want to uh, discuss and would be the supply chain uh, we are facing certain issues in pakistan related to the supply chain especially in the covid uh, scenario but even pre covid uh, we have had our challenges with the supply chain uh, like i rightly mentioned earlier on uh, that we have uh, a very secure food basket uh, and pakistan can definitely consider uh, one country which can have enough local production of the produce to cater to its 220 million people uh, however uh, due to uh, the supply chain issues and the cold storage uh, and the cold supply line issues we are often faced with situations where we are uh, unable to meet the demand of our consumers and hence we have to rely on imports uh, i personally feel and i'm of the view uh, that the global trend now is to move towards local production because what we have also seen in the covid scenario is that due to suspension of flights uh, due to suspension of logistics uh, we all faced uh, certain issues on all levels uh, there were lo local logistic issues within a country and i think all of them faced that because trucking companies were struggling with it uh, we have pakistan so the countries which were importing meat from pakistan or other produce which uh, is reefer based faced a lot of problems uh, though cargo was moving through sea freight but obviously time lags were there and delays were there which has i think is is something to consider for the industry to i chain by post focusing on the storage facilities and also on the cold store facilities so that's one thing that needs to be done uh the other thing that i feel that i want to talk about a little bit is uh, what's happening with the consumer and how the market has reacted to this whole covid situation uh if we look at the packaged food and beverage industry uh since we don't have any real numbers to uh, relate to uh it's uh, somewhat an undocumented uh, industry when it comes down to the horeca sector but uh to be uh, as a safe bet we can say 25 to 30% of whatever is being produced in the packaging sector uh would go to the horeca sector now in this current scenario uh that sector is badly affected uh, and due to the covid situations we are not seeing uh, the supplies to the hotel restaurants and catering uh which has created an opportunity on the retail side for the consumer uh to procure more and has definitely reflected on the numbers that you see coming out of uh, manufacturing concerns which are producing packaged uh produce for the shelf however uh having said that uh this 30% downturn or 25% downturn is significant volume uh to pinch the manufacturing industry uh what needs to be done to counter this uh as we have seen that the consumer has started uh doing a lot of things at home now or is forced to do things at home and uh this new normal we really don't know how long it will last uh because uh, as humans we have a tendency to revert back to our comfort zones but what uh, what the industry can do to make it more sustainable uh we need to develop new products innovate with new ideas and product categories and new skus where we can bring in uh new packaging solutions obviously and when i say packaging solutions it is not in terms of just the technology uh we need to uh, look at shelf lives 
we need to start moving in different SKUs within a category. Right now, um, the packaged food industry, for instance, and I'll give you an example and I'll correlate it to another example, which is not the food industry, but just to show a consumer trend, uh, is that we normally uh, buy a, a kilogram of something or a kg of something uh, or a, a half a kg pack. But due to, uh, since we're talking about consumers, we know that the disposable income is also being affected in all categories. Now, packaging size need to be looked at to make it more friendly towards uh, consumers to buy. Uh, you know, uh, for, from a consumer point of view, and I'm this, this is particularly re related to moving the Horeca business into the retail to ensure that uh, the volumes are not affected so much. So if we were doing a 12 pack of burger patty, we need to start moving to a four pack as well uh, because of the disposable income certain households may have. Uh, and the reason why I said that is that I would relate it to a, uh, an example which is live in a market like Pakistan is that uh, I'll give you an example of uh, the home and personal care category. Uh, where people started using small sachets uh, of uh, also instant drinks where small sachets came into being. And both these sectors, which was basically a single drink sachet, uh, instead of buying a complete bottle, added significant volumes to the industry uh, because there, were, there is an issue with the disposable income and people wanted instant gratification uh, from a particular product and they were, a, they were not forced to buy uh, something which would last them a month, but uh, because of their disposable income, they wanted to buy something which is smaller and instantly used and done away with. So these trends and these innovations with respect to recipe mixes, with respect to uh, packaging sizes, with, with respect to new innovative products need to be focused to answer and to make the change and the current trend more sustainable for the organizations. And this I particularly, uh, since we have audience from uh, the industry uh, here, I want them to really think about how they can uh, improve upon uh, these elements and how they can make it more attractive. Uh, because if this becomes the new normal, that 25 to 30% of the segment which is hurting may hurt for the next six months or a year and how can you compensate your revenues and then make a sustainable move towards this new trend and new normal. The other thing uh, that I want to uh, talk about is uh, and I have briefly mentioned is uh, the packaging side and I, I believe the packaging would play a significant role in how this uh, industry moves in this direction. Uh, I don't know how much time I have. Uh, just uh, I, think, uh, I think we are slightly over time right now. Okay, so I'll Maybe just like to add one question and answer session. If you can continue exactly. this discussion in the question. Perfect. Answer. I just want to just uh, point out one last thing, and that is that uh, in this time, uh, a big emphasis that is needed, especially for the small and medium enterprise, is to implement skill development and to improve their testing facilities. And the government's uh, support is needed in both these sectors uh, to help reform the industry and make it more sustainable post-COVID and also with the new normal. With this, I would like to thank all of you uh, and thank once again the Pegasus team and all my co-panelists uh, for hearing me out and look forward to the question and answer session. If you have any, please uh, let us know and we'll be glad to answer. Thank you. Thank you, Arush. Thank you very much. We'll definitely continue uh, in our question answer session and the panel discussion. Now, I would like to request Mr. Mamdu Sevdi to, to give his thoughts on the innovations in, in view of the COVID crisis and the way forward as well. So, Mr. Mamdu Sevdi, uh, Business Development and Marketing Manager, International Flavors and Fragrances, UA. Thank you, Mr. Mamdu. Thank you very much. Uh... Mr. Nadim, and uh, what a great leeway from uh, from Mr. Areej to for me to start talking about uh, innovation. Um, what I plan to do today is I plan to walk you through uh, how we at IFF 
uh, look at innovation in this new normal. Um, we're going to look a little bit about how consumers are seeing innovation, uh, how consumers are changing with this new normal, uh, and where we as food manufacturers can start exploring and stepping in uh, for us to sustain our business in this tough time. Um, first and foremost, um, what we're seeing at the moment is, is, is a crisis that is going to stretch our limits to, to a place that uh, you know, we've never all seen before. So whether it's on the um, uh, personal side of things, uh, you know, we're, we're starting to figure out how we need to work from home. Uh, you know, we fight with our spouses over the, over the space, over the dining table to be able to have our meetings. Uh, or whether it's from a business perspective, us having to deal with our customers and our consumers virtually um, is, is becoming a very difficult thing. Um, so, so whether we like it or not, the world as we know it has completely changed. Um, the past three months and the coming, um, I would say one and a half to three years, like, uh, like Mr. Amir said, are gonna be completely different when it comes to consumer habits and behaviors. Um, and that's happening uh, not because uh, uh, people are changing drastically, but it's because the circumstances that people are in uh, have changed very quickly uh, in a very short period of time. Um, luckily for us as food manufacturers and, 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 and people in, in the food world, we realize that food processing and retail is one of the potential winners of what's going on. Now, obviously, um, uh, as my other colleagues mentioned, not everybody in food is going to be benefiting from what's happening. So we know that food service, for example, is, is being hit quite badly because people cannot go out. Um, but there are certain manufactured products that are seeing very high uplifts, like baking, baking products, as Mr. Arish mentioned, uh, while others like gum and candy have, have seen very, very slower uh, volumes because simply I, I don't need to buy a gum if I'm not going out to see my friends. Um, but what's important for all of us as, 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 as people in the food industry is to realize that this current period is going to be a tough one. This is data from McKinsey, and, and they basically talks about how consumers are increasingly feeling the impact or the financial impact of COVID-19. Um, you can see at the very bottom of the slide, the majority of consumers are telling us that they've started preventing making certain purchases, they're starting to cut back on their spending and starting to very carefully see exactly what they're spending on and scrutinize uh, uh, their spends. And for us as food manufacturers, that's not a very uh, promising sign. Uh, the reason why consumers are doing that obviously is that uh, the majority of them are actually seeing reductions in their income over the past period. And that is expected to continue over time. Uh, the recession that's going to come post-COVID is going to be uh, it's going to be a big one. Uh, nobody can know how long is it going to last and whether it's going to be a V curve or a W curve. Um, but nonetheless, we all know that there is a recession coming. It's a global recession, and accordingly, the amount of disposable income is going to de decline pretty drastically. And that is why, as innovators, as as, as food uh, Mr. Mamdou, can you please share your screen with us because this is not showing. Share the screen. So uh, it uh, maybe it's lost. Let me let me let me try. Yeah, thank you. Just give me a second. Is it visible now? It should be. Should be on the way. Yes, now it is. Can we go back for a few slides also? Just uh, oh, okay. Yeah. So you have, I, I haven't been sharing it since the start. No, not not exactly from the start, but I think yeah, during the crisis we are facing our limits. I think that should be there. Absolutely. Uh, so I'll, I'll 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 just run through this very quickly. Like I was saying, th this time is a very difficult time, and consumers uh, are, are are seeing a very uh, a very new normal. Um, and as manufacturers, it's, 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 it's about time that we start thinking of how do we deal in this new normal. Um, and this is, this is the part when I was talking about uh, being in the world of food processing and retail, we're actually one of the potential winners. Um, so it's actually not too bad for us and we should consider ourselves lucky um, that there is a positive outlook to this. Obviously not all of us are gonna see that positive outlook. Uh, uh, certain industries within food, food manufacturing are. Um, 
this was the data from McKinsey that talks about how consumers are uh, really feeling the pinch of the, the financial impact of COVID-19 um, and, and how in the future, we, the amount of disposable income that people uh, have is going to decline. Clearly that is, that is driven because people are seeing reduced income uh, over the past two weeks. Um, now, this is a very telling slide uh, uh, on what's happening in the future, what's going to happen in the future. Um, what you see on the very left-hand side is the, is the consumer budget pre-crisis, and in the middle is the consumer budget during quarantine, and on the right-hand side is the consumer budget or forecasted consumer budget uh, post-quarantine 2021 and beyond. And this is from Deloitte Consulting. And what's striking about that is that as we move to 2021 and beyond, the disposable income available for consumers is going to actually, as a total, decline which means that we will be competing harder for consumers' dollars. And accordingly, as manufacturers, uh, and Mr. Arij talked about that, it is time for us to start thinking of new ways of how we are able to catch these consumers that are falling off our repertoires of brands, whether it's new innovation or new packaging or new SKUs or new pricing models. Um, and what I'd like to talk about today is, is a little bit on the innovation side on, on how we uh, see uh, some interesting innovation opportunities in the times of COVID-19. Um, so what I'll talk to you about is two big trends, and I know uh, we're a bit short on time, so I'll try to keep it as, uh, as short as possible. Um, I'll talk about two big innovation opportunities that we see at IFF uh, that can be implemented cross category um, uh, for manufacturers. The first one is what we call augmented health. Uh, now clearly when, when COVID-19 hit, um, a lot of us uh, uh, went out and, and, and started searching for vitamin C's and immunity boosting type of foods. Um, and it's very clear, this is data from Google searches, that at the time of COVID-19 and when it really hit, we've noticed that consumers have actually actively been searching online for uh, things that are immune, immune boosting foods. So they actually went online searching for immune boosting foods because they needed that. They were worried. Um, we know that, uh, and you probably heard about that, that there was a global shortage in, in frozen orange juice uh, around the world at a point the prices have struck really high, simply because consumers just went out and bought everything on the shelf. In many countries, um, in the Middle East and Pakistan as well, um, something like uh, uh, vitamin C kind of ran off the shelves from pharmacies. You couldn't find vitamin C anymore uh, because people were really, really hungry for anything that can boost their immunity. And accordingly, we see that as an opportunity for food manufacturers. Um, so many of these manufacturers have started stepping into that uh, uh, space of immune boosting messages. So you can see here some of the beverage products um, on, on tea and, and water and juices. And you can see how they're bringing up the immunity message center stage. Um, it's really what consumers are looking for now. Um, and talking about how, although this COVID situation might, might surpass us, but it's always gonna be in our memory and, and people will always uh, seek, seek immune boosting products. So might be an interesting opportunity for manufacturers to consider bringing in some immunity messaging um, to their products. And it's not only for beverages, we actually see it on snacks as well. Uh, many of these new snacks, new age snacks products are starting to bring in the message of immunity uh, front of the pack. Now, clearly as food manufacturers and members of the food industry, your product and categories will be different. But what we're trying to tell you is that these are trends that cut across categories and can work uh, for any of, of your categories. Um, the second big trend that we wanna talk about or the second big innovation trend is what we call nesting at home. Um, from the picture, we've all been doing that. We are all stuck at home, we all have curfews in our countries and we're spending more and more time at home. Um, and because we're spending more and more time at home, we are unable uh, uh, to go out and make certain purchases that we used to previously. Think about the categories that are on um, uh, baking products like cupcakes and cakes that are packaged products. What we used to do previously is that when we were out and on the go, we would you know, need an energy or a hunger fix and we would buy a ready-made galaxy uh, cake or ready-made Skittles pack. And what these manufacturers realize is that with COVID and with people being stuck at home, they're not able to make these purchases anymore. And to try to bridge in that demand gap that suddenly happened to their volumes, they started creating things like what you see in front of you. These are in-home baking mixes. 
by Galaxy and by Skittles to give the consumers the product that they've always had on an impulse type of purchase on the road, but actually baking it at home. And we know that uh, in the past period, baking at home and baking ingredients have, have grown uh, uh, very quickly. So it's an interesting approach by, by Galaxy and Skittles to try to step into a completely new area that they've never played in before, which is baking, mixing, uh, by capitalizing on what's been happening uh, because of COVID. Um, the other interesting thing is that as consumers, we were always used to getting, going out to coffee shops, to restaurants and getting our coffee fix. So most of us would have our favorite coffee shop, whether it's a Starbucks or a Costa, um, and we'd go get our cappuccino or our latte um, and enjoy that. Now, unfortunately with COVID, we no longer can do that. And, and, and some companies have considered that and capitalized on that by creating a product that is designed for the barista at home. So they created a milk product that they, that they would normally sell to food service. And they've actually created a retail product out of it for consumers designed for the barista at home. So they're encouraging people to get that same coffee shop experience, but at home using a specially designed product. Again, an interesting approach by, by that manufacturer to move in or plug in certain volume loss that they had in, in food service by creating a retail product. And this is my last slide before I, uh, before I let you go. And it's, it's, it's the last experience that we have or example that we have. Um, and is really trying to learn from what Nespresso has done. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with Nespresso, Nespresso is a Nestle brand. And for years on end, the Nestle was a very strong coffee player with their Nescafe brand. And, and I'm sure you are not familiar with that. And for them to grow the business, they needed to find or create a completely new category. And their biggest competitive at that moment were coffee shops. People wanted to get coffees from coffee shops. So a brilliant marketer and a brilliant person at, at Nespresso decided to create this brand, uh, which they call Nespresso, which is a little bit of artisanal type of coffee that people can make in their own homes to eat, share from coffee shops. This, this, this innovation was so successful. Nespresso now is all over the world. Any, any office that you go to would have an espresso machine. And a lot of us have Nespresso machines at home and we'd like to show it off to our guests when we come over with these colorful, nice looking sleek uh, designs and, and, and these capsules. Now, how can we learn from that experience in other categories? Some of us might say that it, it, it might not work, but others might consider something like what SodaStream has done. Basically, SodaStream is revolutionizing the beverage world, and they've been doing it for quite some time, where they're letting consumers create their own carbonated drinks at home. You get this machine from SodaStream, very similar to what the Nespresso machine does, you put in, fill in water in that bottle you see in front of you, you press the button and the water gets carbonated immediately. Very simple, no electricity, very cheap type of product, not too expensive, and people can make their own thing. And what they're doing now is that they're starting to sell these juice concentrates so people can mix in and match their own flavors and not buy ready-made products. This, with what's going on in this world, might be the future of the beverage world. And I'm showing you this just to spark a little bit of insight and a little bit of innovation on how certain categories that we might not think can be consumed or made at home can actually transform into creating a completely new um, business model. So that's it uh, uh, from our side at IFF. Uh, like I said, I wanted to go quickly because we're short on time um, uh, and I'm happy to take questions as, as, as we go towards the end. So thank you very much for your time and for listening. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mamdu. It was really very, very insightful and very informative and, and uh, very useful presentation. Now, may I, uh, coming to, from the beverage directly to Mr. Vido Wonke, the area manager, area sales manager, Asia Pacific for Flux era. Uh, and he's going to talk about and discuss with us how can modern drum emptying systems ensure compliance to new post-COVID regulations in production with the new SOPs in terms of distancing of workers, protection of media, and other related uh, topics. So Mr. Vido, I would like you to uh, give us your thoughts on, on the innovations in your sector. Thank you, Nadim. Um, I try to show how can I... Okay, I try to start my 
to split my screen. Okay. I see. Okay, we've got it. Is my screen visible? Yes, it's quite visible. Okay, okay, great, great. Yeah, hello from my side. I try to speak up and speed up a little bit. Um, Thank you very much. Thanks for Nadine for introducing me. Um, I'm looking after after um, pumps. My company is uh, the market leader for for drum pumps, and uh, I can only undermine what what my colleagues already said in their presentations. We also see a trend in terms of more reform, more reinvention, more automation. And what I would like to to show you and take you through my presentation is. How can a pump manufacturer um, contribute to that new developments in COVID-19? How can we support in terms of social distancing of workers? How in terms of to protect media? Because a modern pump system can give quite a large contribution to that and, and, and help to, um, to stick to the more stringent rules, what we also, we as the manufacturer for pumps, uh, see that coming. And I have two examples um, which I would like to highlight. One example is the handing of tomato paste um, for high viscous media. The second example later will be for low viscous media, could be cooking oil, could be, could be, um, could be um, um, pulp, fruit pulp. So how is tomato paste handled at the moment? And these pictures I want to point out are not taken in Asia and not taken in Pakistan. They are taken in, uh, in, in, in Europe. Um, the problem what we see is at the moment that several um, industries do not focus or before COVID, they have not focused very much on food handling, on proper handling. Um, for example, tomato paste is supplied in 200 uh, kilograms uh, drums with inliner bags and the question is how can I unload these drums into the food processing machines into mixers into storage tanks and um, such an inliner bag can weigh easily up to 250 to 300 kgs depending on the content and the question is if you are going to unload and to process and empty these, these drums by hand is it possible to do it with just one worker? This means in turn, can we keep social distancing of the workers? Most probably two workers will be required to unload and to process this tomato paste. And here already the problem starts. These are some images which I took at a, at a customer or at a processor um, for tomato paste. You see that they take out the inliner. They cut it just with a normal cutter and uh, put the tomato paste into the mixing uh, tank or in the storage tank. And we see several problems, especially um, under the impression of uh, post-COVID-19. Can we avoid or how can we protect these kind of uh, products for, for germs? How can we protect it for bacteria? How can we avoid that uh, contamination occurs? And how can we ensure that just one worker at a time is doing this, this job? In the current handling process, I have my doubts that this will work. So the industry has thought about this and also my company. And um, we introduced um, a couple of years ago automatic drum emptying system, which are fully mobile, which are able to be operated by one person. You see on the image that the, it can be pushed easily by one person and we bring the unloading system easily to the drums, to the location of the drums. The system is on rollers, so handling is quite easy. And as I said, it is easy to operate by one person. Again, social distancing. There is one switch off, one switch off, um, on off switch and we have the remote control which operates the arm to up and down position and when the unit is pumping as you see on the bottom uh, it is very easy for one worker to process Pro it, put it either into pipe work or to put it into into drums or into mixers 
how does how does such a system operate? It is rather simple, and this undermines what I said with a one-person operation. You see that cutting and opening the the inliner back is rather simple. Um, then you bring as the next step, you bring the uh, the drum emptying system next to the drum. You lower the centering plate. The centering plate is sliding into the drum and pushing and pumping the material, the tomato paste out of the drum. The beauty of such a system is not only that, that you can reduce your manpower, you also have extremely low residues. This means when you finished your pump job and the drum is emptied, you can easily take out the inliner by one hand. You don't need, you, you, you just have one or two kilogram left of media, which is also able to be taken out by one worker. Also here again, social distancing can be kept. Another beauty is that such systems are mobile and also rather compact, so it fits into an existing environment. I don't need a high ceiling height. I can put it into elevators easily. So there is not a lot of investment to be done at the production side. At the same time, and now I'm coming back to the, to the germs and bacteria, it's a very good, it's an ideal contamination protection. Even if the drum cannot be emptied in one day, you can leave it overnight. The follower plate hermetically seals the product and the openings for the drum and uh, for the drum pump can be closed with, uh, with caps, like you see here. You can put it in the refrigerator, in the, the cooling storage, and can process it the next time. The next uh, part I would quickly touch on is the handling of low viscous media, because also for, like example, cooking oil, um, there are ways to support um, companies, producers to stick to more stringent rules. The current practice, what I've seen quite often in, uh, in production sites is like here, they just empty drums by gravity, they put it on a crane and try to pour it into production lines. Um, a solution from, from the pump manufacturer side are pump systems which could be either manual, like you see on the left side, or which could be semi or even fully automatic, uh, like you see on the right side. And the beauty about this is these systems are closed. So there is no uh, contamination of germs as well. Since the drums, um, the bungholes are closed with adapters. And on the bottom left side, this is a picture which I did uh, take at the cosmetic. Um, company but it's the same situation the, each drum comes with one pump and when the worker just need to take out ingredients like flavors like fragrances he connects the motor switches on the pump and takes out as many kilograms or liters as desired without the risk of contamination on the right side you see the higher sophisticated version with flow meters which allow you to do batch filling so you have batch filling capabilities where you can preset a certain quantity and the flow meter equipped with an auto stop valve exactly um, takes out the quantity which is desired. Also here, these systems what we see are number one, they are closed system. Number two, they are easy to operate by one person. And number three, it's again contamination. Um, it's safe against contamination. And um, the picture on the bottom right is taken. Um, you see that even for IBCs, uh, such pump systems can be used. The, our pump in this case is connected to the bottom outlet. You see the red little motor and the pump system pumps uh, the, the material, in this case, it was uh, food ingredients uh, into the packing machine where the dosing, where there is a buffer tank and the machine doses certain uh, quantities into the final filling machine. 
So this is a solution, and this was very brief, very, very brief in terms, uh, looking at my, my watch, I try to make it rather brief. This is the contribution what a, a pump manufacturer can do, um, create systems which are sealed systems and which are easy to operate and which help manufacturers to reduce manpower and um, yeah, to increase, um, let's say, production quality. I hope it was understandable and I'm very happy to, to answer questions later in the Q&A session. Thank you very much, Mr. Wiedel. This was very informative and quite illustrative of the, of the points which were already made by our previous speakers uh, who spoke about automation and the importance of automation and hygiene. And you have illustrated it perfectly through your technology. Thank you very much. Thank you. We do have a few questions for you, which of course will come uh, very shortly. And uh, I think we are, we are good with time. And uh, now I would like to thank all the panelists for your, your very informative presentations. But now we are going to have a discussion, a panel discussion on the, the topics that were discussed. So I would like to start with Mr. Arej. Uh, you have mentioned uh, the different sectors in, in which we have got some opportunities also in which there's dairy, you have mentioned uh, the, the poultry. So suddenly I think Mr. Amir also would like to elaborate on that. Uh, the, the, the speed at which the industry was going to adopt these uh, the, the technologies is going to be accelerated because of the COVID. So uh, is our industry ready, Mr. Harij, for, uh, for this uh, new, uh, new trends and what is required in terms of automation, in terms of processing, hygiene, SOPs, and uh, from the, what we, you know from your customers and, and, the, and the professionals in the industry? Uh, are they following these uh, and seriously considering these opportunities? Uh, well, uh, like I said, yes, people are becoming more and more aware of the opportunity. Uh, you see, we have been a very slow uh, consumer trend change market so far. Uh, and there are certain factors which have affected that. Uh, one being that, uh, uh, you know, uh, obviously the the consumer uh, trend or behavior in terms of how they have been consuming goods and, and the perception that a lot of us have uh, uh, the packaged products as buying fresh produce. However, uh, like I said earlier, this has created an opportunity. And if the manufacturing concerns can uh, fully uh, capitalize on it by conveying the right message, uh, to the consumer at this point in time, where people need to be sure of uh, the produce in whichever sector they are getting, uh, be it in the dairy sector or in the meat or fresh fruit, uh, that they, with the packaged and processed product, they can get more surety on the food safety, uh, on also being free from various uh, bacteria or germs, which can be disease causing uh, these messages, if conveyed properly. Uh, so focusing on the hygiene standards and also focusing, like I said, the, the consumer trend is thing. And one of the hindrances have there, there've been primarily two hindrances. One is obviously uh, when we talk about packaged product, as opposed to food, uh, which is available, uh, the packaging size plays a big role. Uh, you, you know, you, you get sizes which some households in the medium to low income brackets may find difficult um, to buy. Uh, and so they would prefer if it's a packaged product uh, to actually benefit from it on the packaging side and buy lesser quantity because the need is not as much as the others and they do not may not have the storage within the household to hold on to such packaged product. So make, keeping in view all these consumer behaviors which cause uh, the transformation from fresh to packaged products, 
uh, if recognized pos uh, positively, definitely there is uh, a tendency for the consumer to shift now. And uh, obviously it is primarily based on the safety and health concern uh, and can be capitalized. Uh, and uh, and in, in, like I said, in all sectors, uh, the meat and, and the potential is huge. I gave an example of the dairy where it's ten, less than 10% packaged milk. Uh, in the very same way, poultry also has a very low number, a six, single digit number in terms of packaged uh, produce, uh, ready to eat meals, ready to cook meals. So there is a, a huge area that can be tapped. In the food sector, also in the fruit, as you mentioned. Exactly. Uh, because we are not doing anything with the fresh produce right now. Uh, uh, we are not further processing, even in the fresh form. So when, there is very little being done on the fresh fruits and vegetables, for instance. Uh, so packaging, packaging sizes, uh, if implemented with some innovative ideas, can definitely result in uh, a growth in these uh, sectors. Thank you. Uh, Arij, there was one comment from Mr. Zeram, and he mm -hmm. said that in the, the consumer education is also necessary at the same time as uh, to bring, uh, you know, an adoption of these. So for that, I would like to uh, ask Mr. Amir his views about uh, the new uh, packaging and innovations and uh, some of the things that uh, Multivac might be uh, able to provide some new solutions in this in view of the COVID. Yeah, as I highlighted uh, during my presentation, uh, the, there are certain parameters are very, these days are become very important for consumers and for the industry. And for sure, uh, one of the major ones is all about increasing the shelf life. And really, the, one of the most important one is also traceability of the package. So you can really make sure that the package uh, is uh, securely packed and produced at the factory and goes in the uh, right uh, channel to the hand of consumer and uh, uh, without any contamination as a secure sealed package. So shelf life is very important. Uh, right size of the package means right portion size based on the uh, consumption of such a product is important to reduce the wastage. This is also very important. So really uh, every time secure package is open, fully consumed, and the consumer for the next day or the next uh, consumption, they can open a new package. So, uh, and make efficient package, as I uh, mentioned, more and more going through the on online portal these days. And to have that, you have to have a, a, a good, uh, less a storage space. So it's a really efficient package based on the size of the product. It should be stackable. It should have the right data, right information, right barcode, and all this data consumers like to have. Uh, so these are all important uh, factors which is coming to the picture and uh, producers are have to supply. And uh, really, again, back to industry, Automation is very become more and more important. It was the one question how to attract the consumer attention also uh, at, at the shelf for sure uh, or bring uh, take the customer trust, the consumer trust into 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 attention. So for sure, it's all about generating this trust means pro making sure that uh, you can promote that you have the right processing, uh, right automation at the factory and uh, really promoting this through any communication channels and uh, delivering the results uh, into the online portals or supermarket or shelf of the supermarket. So this is all together hands on, uh, deliver the customer trust and consumer trust. Yes. Thank you very much, Mr. Amir. And, uh, Thank you. Just yeah. one comment, Mr. Nadim, to Mr. Zerhams, uh, and I would like to elaborate on what uh, mm -hmm. Amir just said. Uh, when we're talking about the consumer, the, what's very important is to creating that mind space. And mm -hmm. why, for all manufacturing concerns, it is the right time because COVID has actually created that mind, stay, mind uh, space for everyone where everybody is thinking hygiene, safety. So, you know, now the focus is that. So it, it will be, you know, some small steps in the right direction by manufacturers to make the consumer aware and give them the edge to reach out to them because COVID has already taught us that, you know, we have to be safe. So 
that element is there, which we were not thinking before uh, when we were buying groceries. Uh, not everyone at least. So for the masses, for the consumer, it's the right time for manufacturing concerns to convey the message how safe you are in terms of your processes, in terms of your SOPs and the benefits related to it. And the reception would be higher because the mind space is already there. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Mandu, you, we, um, you spoke about potential winners and losers in that. I hope the yes. losers are not losing for a long t period of time, but I think the horeca and other tourism industry and directly related is the horeca. But of course, the winners are the agriculture, e-commerce, as you mentioned, and personal health care, food processing. I have a question here uh, from one of the participants. And uh, ye, what is your, uh, what are some of the solutions that uh, uh, in terms of ingredients and uh, that are there immediately available for the consumers, uh, for the industry to pass on to these benefits to the consumers? Uh, good question, uh, Mr. Nadim. Um, so when we talk about, uh, there are a couple of trends. So when we talk about ingredients for the immunity boost trend, um, very simply, if you look at any culture, uh, and if you look at the consumers of any culture, you will realize that there are certain ingredients, or in our case, we like to say there are certain flavors uh, that are associated with immunity. Um, and there are some that cross across the world. So if I say something like ginger or lemon or turmeric, these are immediately associated with uh, well-being and health and immunity. Um, and what we are promoting at the moment at IFF is that we are driving different manufacturers from different categories to instead of going through the hard approach of creating nutritional uh, uh, immunity hard claims that are based on certain specific ingredients, we can actually go the soft approach and give the perception of immunity by bringing in um, vitamin C or oranges or flavors of turmeric and, and so on and so forth alongside an ingredient that obviously brings in the benefit. Um, and that cuts across like I, like I showed uh, the different industries. Um, so, yeah. yeah, thank you very much. And uh, uh, of course, the different phases, which Mr. Amir also mentioned, of change are going to be, we are right in the middle of this change and we cannot even comprehend the kind of uh, some of the things that are to come in the future. So uh, we are looking forward to that. Uh, the good and the bad we, need, we will deal with, but uh, the opportunities are there and uh, to deal with it it's a collectively it's a global issue it's a global supply chain which has been affected and i think some countries will be more affected because of the uh, their dependence on the imported ingredients and the self sufficient so this will also drive many countries for the uh, for their own food security issues uh, for mr vido i have a question here for you uh, that for the, do you have any weighing facility just to decant the pulp or paste in smaller quantities? Because here we are not dealing with very large and bulk quantities in Pakistan. Uh, we have various systems. We have systems available with uh, with weighing systems, filling systems, and decanter uh, systems. The system, especially what you saw in the presentation. Um, is also suitable for smaller quantities, but then it will be um, uh, by means of a flow meter. So there is a flow meter which we can um, in implement in that system, which exactly um, can um, make dosing um, work for starting with a couple of milliliters up to certain liters. So we have various systems depending on um, the volumes which need to be handled. Uh, thank you very much. I think we are, uh, the, if the panelists have some questions for the other panelists, it would be great to uh, have this kind of inter, interchange as well. And after that, we will, we will conclude our session. Uh, I would like to have, I have a question for Guido. Uh, when we talk about uh, such systems uh, where you are, uh, you know, moving viscous or non-viscous products or semi-viscous products, uh, you said uh, that one worker is sufficient uh, for uh, 
handling one of these uh, and keeping in view uh, the times like these, how, you know, is there a hygiene mechanism? Is there a CIP unit attached or find there's operator wise, we can see an advantage. Uh, the operator could be uh, following the SOPs which are required in today's time. But uh, the equipment uh, cleaning, uh, post and pre usage, uh, what are the, uh, you know, uh, in, uh, I would say, what precautions are you taking for that? Uh, because that's also very imperative in any production. If we are using a clean in process or is it an, uh, uh, you know, a non clean in process, how does that work? Yes, it's a very good question. Um, we, are, we are doing um, hygienic products in stainless steel since quite a longer time and we have pumps and pump systems which are able to be dismantled completely, which are able to be cleaned via steam, via um, um, certain chemicals. So it's a system which you saw, the drum emptying system, for example, is IP66. So you can even use the high pressure um, jet cleaner. Um, the pumps can be dismantled completely and put into a cleaning cabinet. That's what I've seen with some customers. They dismantle the pump. It's rather fast and easy to dismantle a pump and to put the interiors which are in touch with the media which can be sterilized in the sterilizing uh, cabinet. So our pumps are all mobile, as you have seen. So this means they are not fixed in production lines. So this means to take them out of the drum, out of the production area is rather fast. You can just take them by your hand and dismantle them. To give you an idea, to dismantle a hygienic pump takes you around one minute, 1.5 minutes. Then you have all the different, the interiors, separately, which can be steamed, which can be sterilized. Okay, thank you very much. Answer your question? Thank you, Mr. Green. Yes. yes. Uh, I have a couple of questions for, uh, uh, you know, both the other speakers, uh, panelists. Uh, Amir, uh, I would like to ask him, uh, is he seeing in Pakistan, especially with regards to Pakistan? I, I know we discussed about the global trend, but in the last three months, going forward, have you started seeing any change in uh, the nature of demand from the Pakistani uh, customers? Or, or do you foresee, has the discussion started on which way the package is going to move, uh, packaging industry or packaging solutions are going to move? So just your views. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the question. Uh, in regard to Pakistan market, uh, I would say is already started. Uh, we are talking to some uh, major food suppliers. There are some uh, market leaders in Pakistan market which they are already advanced. They are already there with uh, fulfilling such a standard. But uh, as you mentioned also, there is certain uh, medium or smaller producers that they have to improve and to, to be there. Because if they are not there, they cannot uh, fulfill the demand of the market. Which uh, we are seeing they are already starting to uh, to talking to that direction and thinking to that direction that they have to improve and follow these market leaders, some in local market or some in other neighbor countries or for sure what is happening in Europe or U.S. market. So uh, I think gradually this is uh, is developing, but uh, as we mentioned. This should happen in the short time and everybody need to make sure that they, they can uh, catch up with it because if they don't catch up, it's not about the now, uh, okay, uh, about the market share. It's, it's all about to be in the market or not to be in the market. If you don't fulfill certain standard safety measurements, uh, if there will be, there will be uh, some, some issues, find out about your product, about contamination of such a viruses or such issues, you will be rejected or you will be out of market forever. So the suppliers cannot afford that. And for sure for that, they need to define a little bit higher grade of a standard. It was there, but now it was a little bit uh, push or alarm for everyone that we have to a little bit do more. We have to do more. There is a room for improvement. And I'm sure same happening in Pakistan and hopefully uh, the economy can support to happen in the shorter time. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank that. you. 
I have one question, last question from Mr. Mamdu from Mr. Aritz. <laughs> yes, uh, just I, I basically have a similar question for you, Mamdu, as well. You talked about mm -hmm. immunity boosters, you talked about herbal products, a changing trend, innovative products. And that's what I also mentioned that, you know, that's the need of the hour. Uh, are you seeing any interest from the Pakistani side and which category where you, you would see more of an emphasis or an interest in the Pakistani, uh, you know, so that our manufacturing uh, people, participants who are with us from the manufacturing side can benefit and set a direction if you could guide everyone on that. Absolutely. It's a great question, and, and, and you're absolutely right. And I think it's a similar situation to what uh, Mr. Amir was saying. With, with what happened with COVID, uh, a lot of people right now, especially food manufacturers, are kind of sitting and watching, trying to understand where the business is going to come out. Um, and, and a lot of people and a lot of global companies and local companies have told us that innovation is really kind of pushed back in terms of their priority. Um, but what we know and what we've started to see specifically over the past month is that companies are realizing that, okay, this is the new normal and we're expecting to last with this for quite some time. And it's really time for us to start thinking of innovation from a different perspective. And this is exactly situ examples like immune boosting type of products or products that are designed for in-home consumption for an in-home experience uh, are the things that our people are looking at. Low type of uh, uh, capex required. A, a small change uh, that's needed. So, so far in Pakistan, we're seeing um, obviously uh, so, some interest from, from, from the major beverage manufacturers. Uh, we've also seen some interest uh, from, from the dairy guys and a little bit, and which is very interesting for me and on the confectionery side, because there's always been that uh, very nice bridge between confectionery product on pharmaceutical confectionery, if I may use the term, um, and that's an interesting direction as well for many of the confectionery manufacturers to move uh, into that spectrum as well. So, so we're seeing that uh, happening in Pakistan at the moment, but it's early on. It will take some time. You know, the blister packs came in the confectionery industry, and I was very worried about that because the children, uh, candies were coming in like medication and that. Yes, I think, Thankfully, that has stopped now. Thank you very much, all the panelists, and uh, Mr. Amir, Mr. Mamdu, Mr. Guido, and Mr. Arej. And uh, I would like to hand to uh, hand it over to Mr. Amir Khanzada to uh, to for a, to conclude the session. And uh, it has been a wonderful session for me to moderate from Pakistan Food Journal. You can see all the uh, the coverage with more details about all these presentations in the coming issues of our publication. Thank you. Mr. Amin. Thank the you, everybody. And uh, thank you, the uh, participants as well, for their interaction. Um, special thanks to Mr. Nadi Mazar to conduct this whole session, which is the first of uh, in this food technology, and hopefully under his guidance and with all you people, we would like to have some more sessions uh, which will be coming up in the coming weeks and months to keep everybody engaged. So uh, Guido, thank you, Amir, many thanks. Arit Saab, it was inviting. Uh, Mamdu, your presentation was, was very nice and it was interesting in terms of the number of uh, questions which you've raised and got got again today. I'm sure you're going to get a lot more. And I uh, thank you, my team, who's made it all possible in uh, formalizing all of you here. And uh, hopefully we would see you all in, uh, in the near future in another topic, another session, and we'll be sharing more ideas uh, to cross-fertilize. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you very much. Shukriya. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.